the one that's in my head next would be Kurt Swan. I almost want to save him for last, to tell you the truth. Out of respect, we can do that. I also want to mention Kurt Schaffenberger. Okay. He was kind of like the 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 Kurt Swan understudy, I guess you could say, and did a lot of the stuff that I guess he didn't have time for. Uh, again, very simple style. Probably you know, better looked at through a historical perspective. Because quite frankly, if he were doing that kind of art today, I don't think he could get hired. But for the time, he was a serviceable artist. And that's really all you needed in those days. And And yes, yes, now now we we can can talk talk about about Jose Luis Luis Garcia Garcia Lopez. All righty. There is actually a guy on Twitter, by the way, who loves Jose Garcia Lopez art. And um, he he posts it every so often. This is... I would say his heyday was probably mid seventies through the crisis. Okay. Well, thank you because I got to admit if you get past my age of understanding, (laughs) then, then I'm like, okay, wait a second. This guy was there. This guy was there. So this is the Superman I grew up with essentially. Uh, And this is the one that ended up on the underoos. This is the one that ended up on the t-shirts and basically anything that you had licensed from Superman in the 70s this was the guy that 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 represented um that represented superman to you and to me it's you'll you look at the art it's very simple yet uh dynamic if that if those two things could actually ever be on the same piece of art it would have I, I would pick uh i would pick his superman or actually his entire run of the justice league super friends the whole nine yards I, I agree with that, and I and I do get what you're saying about that because he can make poses that other artists weren't using or weren't doing or didn't have the ability to do. But you always knew where everybody was. Sometimes you know, an artist can get so fancy that, you know, like like when Bill Sienkiewicz was doing his mm-hmm. you know acid trip art or whatever you want to call it. You know, Lopez was always crisp, always dynamic, and not only just Superman, and not only just for that era, if you see licensed stuff from DC to this day, if it's not 40s you know, replicas, it's it's Lopez. I mean, you know, if you see those collectors tins that you you know that you sent Moranya and Iron Man, yep. there's one of the Justice League, it's him. The Batman, it's him. Superman, it's him. He is the he's the quintessential DC artist for that that decade, you know, seventy five to eighty five. Yeah, he's he's absolute. Like I said, he's absolutely the one that um, that I grew up with, hands down. Easiest uh, e- easiest uh, to recognize, almost almost. But uh, after him, you said up to Crisis, which would bring. Uh, John Byrne. Well, I think George Perez. Is oh, he, that's right. George Perez. He was doing the uh, Justice League at the time. Yeah, and he did. Uh, he was doing yeah. a lot of things. And he, and yeah. he, as everybody knows, he did do the art in the crisis. And his, you know, you, now, if you want to put artist lists together for any character, that man's going to be on it because. My God, no one could draw a room full of people like George. That Perez. is true. <laughs> and by the way, that's who we're looking at right here. Yes. That's George Perez Superman. Uh, this is from the uh, JLA uh, Avengers crossover. I actually, it it's a mouse pad with it on. I was like, hell's to the yeah, I'm getting that. <laughs> and, and, and he was given the art assignment on Action Comics after was given the art assignment on Action Comics after they went away from the weekly formula. And when they were back to doing the three Superman books, he was the artist on that for a while. He was the first Superman artist on the new 52. You know, not the, you know, not the action, but Superman. Unfortunately, that did not end well. But yeah, so his, his time drawing Superman spanned decades. And no, no true best of Superman artist would be complete without him. I absolutely agree, but I will so back up you saying what you said is uh, George Perez is in the top 10 of damn near every character yeah. because he's drawn literally every character 
Uh, well, obviously not literally, but just in JLA. Sure? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> JLA Avengers um, li literally does, I can use that word this time, literally has everybody who was an Avenger or a Justice League member up to that point. Mm -hmm. So he did do a whole bunch. Now, did he do literally every character? I don't know, but if there is an MF version of Captain Marvel out there that's done by George Perez, I would get that. You know, split. Ah, there's my hand. Uh, I think that would be a, a damn good time. Um, for as much as I read, for as much as I read Superman beforehand, and of course, uh, Super Friends and the whole yarn. Who would be the artist on Super Friends? Because that's another one that has to be brought up. <laughs> Wasn't Ramona Fraden the art artist on some of those? I don't know. I know there's a whole bunch of them. Uh, but yeah, because they, they, they're they what a lot of kids in the 1970s thought of as Superman as well. Yeah, as much as I loved and I read Superman beforehand, I, start, I, I made sure I caught every issue as soon as Man of Steel came up. By Brian Michael. Ben no, by John Byrne. <laughs> when John Byrne's Man of Steel came out, I became a fan you know it's not just oh yes i like superman i read superman i was a fan and and by that i mean in the classical sense of the word fan is short for fanatic that's where it comes from that's why i don't buy into this that casual person who walks in the store goes oh i like batman and walks out and people are like he's a fan too no he's not it means fanatic <laughs> you're not a fan without that attic part that you can attach to it stripped all of the excess fat off of superman because it seemed like DC Comics wanted Superman to be the most powerful hero. So if the Flash could do it, Superman could do it, you know. And uh, if he had freaking super ventriloquism, Eric. What the hell? Seriously. <laughs> I could throw my voice across the world. <laughs> it, it's to the it's a point where you could actually believe that Superman 4 crap where he's staring at the chi uh, Great Wall of China, putting it back with his eyes. Yeah, it, it was ridiculous. But John Byrne, not, a, and I'm just talking about talking about story right here. But John Byrne just cut the fat, said these are Superman's powers. This is what we're going with. Go, did a great story, but he also managed to take everything that Superman was up to that point and draw it in the perfect figure. The I, I think if you look at the Weisingers, if you look at um, if you look at Swan and all that kind of stuff, you can find a piece of everything in John Byrne's Superman. I'll, I'll buy that. And, and that six issue miniseries kind of took you on a tour through all of that. Yeah, if you, you like, even the, the last issue, the the crypt, the Krypton issue. Krypton. 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 Yes. Neither I nor my wife will leave Krypton. Yeah, and and while we're mentioning Byrne, and like I said he, it was it was so dynamic because. Burn, you could tell that was an absolute passion of his. And he really gave the art his all as well as the story. But I do want to mention as an aside that another artist that get that should get some credit for that revival is Jerry Ordway. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, absolutely. As a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought him up because in all honesty, I had Dan Jurgens down and he had just slipped my mind. Thank goodness. Um, yes, absolutely. Cause after John Byrne left and they kind of went to, uh, if you remember, they went to a weekly schedule mm -hmm. on Superman, not where it would be like Superman every week, but it would be like Superman, then action and then uh, man of steel. And then they came up with, I think one called man of tomorrow even that was supposed to be one every three months where well, it would get that extra weekend or something like that. There's, there's Superman action adventures of Superman adventures, yeah. and Superman man of steel man of tomorrow was for the skip weeks. If they didn't have a special lined up, they didn't have a special lined up. Right. So you had the diamond boxes with one through 52 and that, what that didn't even cover all the Superman books for that year. No. Because sometimes the annuals were, you know. Yeah, and and it would it would be uh, so yeah, I would say like 1990, and then it would have number 30, mm -hmm. and uh, that would be it would mean it would be chapter 30 of the year. I know a lot of people complained about that. I thought that was brilliant. I miss that to this day. 
I know. I wish they, I, and here's the reason why I loved it. The continuity was tight. Yes. So if Superman was out in space in adventures of Superman, he wasn't sitting at home with Lois Lane in action comics. He, he was still in space and you know, you may actually have an issue that was dealing with Bebo and the, uh, and Mon Pa Kent, but damn, you were getting a full story of not just Superman, but the whole world that revolved around, which is one of the reasons you and I had to make that video about the fact that they don't have side characters anymore. There's no supporting. But that's that story, and we're on art. Gary Ordway, I thought, really drew a, a tight Superman. Almost, uh, if I'm, if I remember correctly, it's almost like a svelte Superman. Um, it wasn't exactly like uh, a, an Ed McGinnis kind of big barrel chest bardoon. Um, so he went off the reservation of a little bit as far as that's concerned, because a lot of people when they draw Superman. He's he is he's you know big big barrel chest kind of guy. Well, it was a contrast because every Byrne was doing two, Ordway was doing one, mm -hmm. so it was it was definitely a different look. But faces were the same, the hairstyles were the same. I mean, they took the time to do that, which is something you don't see today. No, not at all. And I, I do I, I've I mentioned I hate that. You know, if if uh, if Catwoman's gonna have high cheekbones, let's make sure she always has high high cheekbones. You know, I'd let's go for the same hairstyle. There you yeah. go. Yeah, I know, right? From panel to panel. <laughs> so there you go, gang. I hope you enjoyed it. I have I've had a lot of fun. I, I I've been editing this, finding the pictures, the whole nine yards, and it was a good time talking about the artist. We've got one more chapter left of this particular video. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Let us know what you think in the comments below. That's going to help the algorithm. That's going to tell uh, YouTube, hey, people are actually watching these videos. So please, please, even if it's just for hello or how you doing or, um, you know, what the heck is the toilet paper doing on the, uh, on the dresser here, that kind of thing, let me know in the comments below. And also click like, share, subscribe, do all the things that help out the channel and all that kind of stuff. If you don't mind helping out the channel financially, there's a Patreon and a Ko-Fi down below. And uh, you just click on one of those, throw a dollar in the till. You don't have to subscribe to anything. Just, hey, here's a buck. Thank you. Alrighty. Anyway, <laughs> i like to thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers, all of the Superman lovers, everybody out there, thank you very, very much for watching.